today kicks off buzzwordathon round number six. I have to rethink just everything about myself. This is just leading up to be like one of my favorite thrillers of all time. Yeah, sometimes you just need to lie down. I'm about to give this bitch two stars. I'm just picky. Hello friends. We're starting the vlog a little unconventionally in the Jeep. You know why? Because I kind of forgot that this was happening today. Today kicks off buzzwordathon round number six. I just got off work and I listened to a little bit of my first read, The Night Swim, while I was working. Maybe like an hour of it. Buzzword this time is night, so books with night in the title. And now I'm driving home and I forgot how fun it is to listen to an audiobook on my commute instead of like a podcast or the radio. I haven't done this in like five months. So I was gonna do a mix of audiobook and physical book, but I'm loving the audiobook so much. You all recommended it. It's really good. It's like full cast and there's a podcast in it, including like little musical intros and stuff. Very authentic. We're following a woman named Rachel and she has this podcast and it's like true crime and she's battling with like other people up and coming with podcasts and wants to stay like relevant and keep things interesting so she ends up doing a case that's different than usual but it has to do with a rape trial and she goes to this small town and she interviews all these people and there's also another element where there's someone following her and like leaving her notes about this other mystery um, that they want her help solving and like bringing attention to which happens to take place in the same small town so I'm assuming we've met like multiple characters who are probably involved in like both crimes or ones involved in a crime you wouldn't expect and it's all gonna get really messy and I just think this is a great concept because we're dealing with really important topics and discussing rape culture and discussing misogyny but then also it's a mystery thriller, which I love. So I'm very excited to continue in this. I don't even know how deep I am in it, but my TBR for the whole week looks like this. It's funny because I said in my TBR video that I was gonna start, oh wait, I'm missing a book. I was gonna start with Goodnight Beautiful because this is an art copy that I need to prioritize. And then I said next I was gonna read the poetry collection because it goes by quickly. And then this one is like the buddy read that me and Paula are reading together. And a lot of you have been tagging me on Instagram today with hashtag buzzwordathon. And quite a few of you have the night tagger as well. So I definitely need to include that. And then I wanted to check out a YA fantasy. So this was technically my least intended prioritized book, but I'm reading it first because of course. How did I not realize I had five books? Because in my mind, I actually added another book to my TBR for the week. It's called Five Midnights, and Paula mentioned it in uh, her recommendation video for this readathon. And these aren't short books, but I was also recommended the audiobook of The Night Tiger, so maybe that will go by quickly. I don't know what's gonna happen here. I'm just gonna take it one day at a time. The Night Swim is going well. Okay, I'm headed to bed. Sorry, my fan is on. Um, I'll make it quick so you don't have to listen to it. I am two thirds of the way through the night swim and I wanted to finish it today because I'm so captivated. It's one of the most like engaging thrillers I've read in a while. I'm really loving the mix of like podcast stuff and then the girl who is trying to get the podcast girl to do her case, you have her perspective. And there's so many different characters, small town vibes, important topics, like I said, it's just like all a really good balance. And we're actually in court, which I think I really like. I don't think that I have found like a subgenre or something within the thriller genre new in a while, the, like I've, a new discovery for myself. But I read Miracle Creek last year and I loved the courtroom scenes, but it didn't really make me want to pick up more courtroom stuff. But now that this happens to have courtroom stuff, like lawyers and banter and judges and juries, I kind of think I love courtroom thrillers. So that opens me up to a whole new world. The victim is about to go on the stand two thirds of the way into the book and like actually tell her 
story. I think we're gonna get a lot of revelations in the last third. And I don't know what's gonna happen. I have like no theories. I'm just really enjoying the audiobook and I'm excited to continue on my commute to work tomorrow. Good morning. I'm headed to work. I'm like an hour out from the end of the audiobook. You know how much I love to match my clothes to my video theme. So this is Lucky Charm. It's a sweet legs print and it's got moons and stars and I think fits with the night theme. I had to make a noise or it wouldn't work with the clip. Dr. Bonnet, she said, we had no reason to doubt at least Chief Russ more. I don't feel very good. I don't look very good. I finished the night swim though and I really, really liked it. Um, oh god, am I okay? <laughs> we got sushi for dinner and like I don't even eat fish. I can't say like the sushi is making me sick because like normally if you get food poisoning from sushi it's because of like the fish and i don't think it's the avocado and cucumber making me sick but i really don't feel right it's a good thing i'm already not going to work tomorrow actually because i have like a 10 hour marketing conference thing that i'm attending online which is going to be fun but i'm going to do that from the comfort of my home so i don't have to waste time and miss some of the whatever lessons driving to and from work and all that stuff so i definitely recommend the night swim and i recommend the audiobook i thought it was great um as far as my rating it's hard because like i really really liked it i have nothing bad to say but if we revert to what i always say are the two things i need in a thriller it's to be entertained and to be surprised and i i was entertained and i loved all the discussions and i loved all of the like everything i loved everything but it was not like a shocking thriller but i don't know that it was supposed to be a shocking thriller or it tried to be a shocking thriller it was still a really good mystery there's multiple mysteries going on but it's one of those cases where like there's only so many people that it could be in this small town with this limited cast and i don't think it would be easy for everyone to predict but it was kind of easy to assume what was going on before the reveals. So it's hard to rate because like part of me wants to give it a five star because I appreciate and respect it so much. But when I think of my list of like five star thrillers, it just doesn't seem right to include this. So I think I'm just going to give it four and a half. Like why the heck not? Because that'll imply that like it's not top tier, but it did a lot. It really did a lot for me. And... This could so easily become a book series. And I would read them. I would read a sequel to The Night Swim. I never say I'm interested in a sequel, especially a mystery. No, but Rachel was a really interesting character. I love her podcast. And there's definitely a lot of room to grow. And I almost think it's intended to be a sequel because there are some characters introduced and like little plot points that are not explored and it feels like it's setting up other storylines i was gonna read my poetry collection but i seriously feel terrible right now maybe i will i'll flip through it i'll fall asleep i'll check in with you in the morning i love finding things that people used as bookmarks in books Just how fast the night changes. Hi friends. It's sad girl hour. It's sad sweater hour, but at least it's on brand with the readathon. I'm just I'm not I'm not <laughs> I can't, I won't. I didn't vlog at all yesterday because the world is sad. <laughs> the world is sad every day, so I shouldn't vlog ever and today clearly i've been crying my eye doctor yelled at me <laughs> i went and got my new contacts to give you an update for my last vlog i got in trouble for how long i wore my old contacts 
and then somebody honked at me in the parking lot because I couldn't see where I was going and then I got the wrong drink at Starbucks and like none of that matters like those those things aren't actually like bothering me you know <laughs> what's actually bothering me makes everything that happens just heightened and more like I just you know that TikTok I'm all over the place I'm sorry you know that TikTok where it's like a girl and she has like no makeup on and she's lying in her bed and she goes the absolute gall of me posting a picture like this while I look like this and it's like this hot photoshopped like face tuned Instagram picture that's how I felt yesterday when I posted my haul because like I pre-filmed that haul I was in such a good mood I was peppy I was bright you know but I was actually lying in my bed all day like crying and so now everything else just keeps setting me off because everything's terrible I just okay I'm gonna lie down yeah sometimes you just need to lie down my bed's covered in clothes because I couldn't figure out what to wear this morning and then I cried again but the idea that we've more or less gotten the evidence that Breonna Taylor's murder is not going to see justice it's a feeling of hopelessness I could not scroll through my feed for more than 10 seconds in the last half a year without seeing Breonna Taylor's name. The idea that everyone has been fighting so hard and laws have literally changed because of her death and money has been exchanged, like settlements have been made, like it has been shown multiple times that what happened to Breonna Taylor was wrong. And yet, the police officers, even in this type of circumstance, will still not see justice. So, how do you have any hope for anything, ever? And like, the world sucks all the time, right? Like, everything sucks all the time. But when there's something that seems so evident to you as a person and then the right thing does not happen, I just don't know how you move on. And like talking about it feels dumb too because it's like this has been happening, you know? for decades and this specific thing has been happening for months nothing has changed but like that's the problem how do you just like exist knowing that like everything the systems just continue to fail everyone and you can feel like there's so much progress being made and you can feel like you're doing as much as you can and you can see everyone doing as much as they can and like everything still sucks what was it the quote that i saw it was like I'm sure everyone's sharing it out. I can't go on social media right now because it's infuriating. Which, but it's also my job, so I can't not. But it was like, the one officer is getting reprimanded for endangering other people. Like, that's what he's in trouble for, is the shots that missed her, not the ones that killed her. It's just like... It's fucked up and everyone knows it's fucked up and so I don't need to like talk about it. But that's why I haven't been vlogging because everything sucks. But then tomorrow when I come back in this vlog and I'm like, oh, I read a book. Like, I'm happy now. It's just... <laughs> I'm reading this. Do you care? It's great. I'm really liking it. Every night, every day, drop a baby off at home before my night. Hello. It's now Saturday. This is my night inspired outfit of the day. I went live last night for like three hours and the intention was to clean my room during that and clearly it didn't happen. But what I did instead was some reading sprints which was fun. Uh, I started Good Night Beautiful and I'm obsessed with it but I'll continue that in a second. Uh, what happened Prior to that that I haven't updated you on is the Night Tiger was five stars. I wish I had updated more throughout the reading of this so you could understand like and I could have explained what I was loving in the moment but this was my second second five star historical fiction of 2020 and I don't know who I am anymore. 
um, I've ha I have to rethink just everything about myself. So this is, I would say, kind of a mix of genres. We've got historical fiction. There is romance as a major plot point. I would say fantasy as a genre. Um, it also is kind of a mystery, and it reads a lot like a mystery. The way the, the chapters leave off, the tension it creates, and the way that, like, in some books... Okay, so something I don't like about, about a lot of books is the relationship with the the knowledge of the reader versus the knowledge of the characters. And what happens in a lot of books that I don't like is when like halfway through the book the reader starts to find out so much more than the characters and we are sitting there waiting for the characters to figure out what we know. And it was so interesting how this book started off that way. So like we were a lot more informed about things before the characters were and then come like halfway through we were just as in the mystery as the characters. So we're following two like converging um, stories. We're following a young boy named Ren and did it tell us how old Jailin is? Let's say late teens? I think? maybe? And she becomes more of the main character over Ren as the book goes on. Liam's playing video games and screaming. But basically what brings them together and their storylines together is Ren is like a houseboy and um this is set in the 30s I think and it has a lot of like Chinese and Malaysian folklore um and he his master died and he has to find his severed finger and bring it to his body within 49 days I think it is in order for his soul to be able to like move on um and it's there's an understanding a belief that like if a spirit isn't able to move on it can like take the form of a tiger and so there's this story of like man-eating tigers and that's like the fantastical kind of element of it where um we don't really know what's happening with this tiger and with this man and his finger ends up in the girl's possession and she is trying to figure out who owns it and where it came from and all this stuff and there's some stuff that happens with all the people that she like you know keeps connecting with and then we have Ren who's just like trying to find the finger but he also is now involved with like another doctor that he is helping out and assisting and doing stuff for and I do think it's interesting that the other five-star historical fiction I gave this year Washington Black was also about I don't even know how old he was but like an 11 year old boy who goes from it's totally different scenarios um, but like being with this one man, being enslaved by this one man or helping this one man and then the story takes him to this other older man who influences his life. While I'm giving this five stars, I definitely could have done without the romance being such like an important part of the book. Um, also just due to the fact that it's step siblings and that's not something that like I would ever think to want to be in the book that I'm reading. I think her storyline was so interesting because it was um she had certain ideas for herself and dreams for herself but then her parents also had certain expectations of her. Her stepbrother has certain expectations of her and she's working as like a dressmaker but she also in order to make money for her family and to relieve the debt she becomes what's it called a dance hall girl yeah a dance hall girl and she is challenging her expectations and um finding her place in society that's what it says right there and so is Ren there's all these super interesting topics like virtues and twins and spirits and it was such an easier read than I thought it would be now I'm reading Goodnight Beautiful and I'm equally obsessed with this so this is a very good reading week for me. Last night when I was doing those reading sprints I think I got to like page 50 
with all of you, which was really fun. Not all of you. There was a couple hundred of you. Um, and the very opening of this book was super interesting. We have a main character who is like directly critiquing the thriller genre of books, which is really fun. Uh, she's talking about how like women in books are always crazy and there's all this misogyny. I'm 143, so halfway through, and there have been like two pretty iconic plot twists for me. One of my all-time favorite plot twists happened in this book, and I'm always very interested in what happens with that plot twist in books because I can't talk about it. I don't want to spoil it. I will spoil this in an upcoming three thriller. Why do I, I've done that in multiple videos. A uh, three thriller video um, where it's not going to be three, it's going to be like 20. But the thing about this plot twist is it has to be introduced not at the end of a book. So it's always very interesting to me to see the plot twist happen and then see how the author keeps you engaged for the rest of the book because like that's the plot twist. There have been a couple other things happening that are very mysterious and I can't wait to find out what's going on. So I am thoroughly engaged and I'm gonna finish this today. It's basically about this therapist guy and he has all of his sessions like him and his wife just moved to a new town and he's getting like a new client base and people keep coming in um and he can be heard like the sessions can be heard through the floor and then he goes missing and dun 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 hi it's been 10 seconds since i updated you literally two pages don't look too closely at this page this is the page that i had just folded over to remind myself where I was. One page later, plot twist number three. And the one thing I didn't tell you that I forgot to mention, sorry if I, I have so much more energy now because something ridiculous just happened. The first plot twist that happened, um, I don't want to tell you at what page point, you know, I don't want to ruin it, but it wasn't that long ago. And I reread the entire like first part again after that plot twist. And it just happened again, and I, uh, I'm completely caught off guard, and I now need to go back again and reread some shit again because I'm upset. This book is fucked. Chapter 30. <laughs> this book just critiqued me as a reader this better be five stars like it, oh my god if uh, if it goes downhill from here i'm gonna be so upset because this is just leading up to be like one of my favorite thrillers of all time so holy fuck i'm pissed so it took me like five fucking minutes to get through the first half of this book and i was obsessed with it right six hours to get through the second half like those hundred pages 130 pages boring nothing happened no interesting twists and essentially like i don't wanna i don't wanna i don't wanna be a bitch but like <laughs> she ah, it's so frustrating like the second half of this book was basically just a ripoff of a really well-known classic novel and as I was reading it I was like like okay I I get that and it is like she's intending to do this I just realized I can't see you like it's not a secret that she's ripping off this other book like that's kind of the point but I thought it was for a better reason than just like being a super fucking basic story like what was the point i'm actually mad like i thought there was gonna be because of the twists that i have posted it that i feel very passionate about that was leading this book to be like i was ready for this to be like my favorite thriller of the year i was ready to make this a literally dead book club pick like a bonus pick and force you all to read it even though i already read it <laughs> so smartly written and I feel like she was really she really had a plan and she knew what she was doing and then didn't really know where to go 
after the plot twist, which was my whole concern. I'm always like, where's the author gonna go when the plot twist happens so early? Well, guess what? The place she went had no thought to it. And I don't wanna be mean. Maybe this was her goal all along, but like, I was so ready to recommend this book to everybody. I'm so upset. I can't tell you the book that it's based off of. I can't explain the references. All I can tell you is I'm annoyed. But while this did play into like that basic thing and didn't do anything new with that thing, like really, I do have to appreciate like it didn't fall into a lot of tropes that people hate with mystery thrillers right now. It actually spoke against a lot of things. It was very like meta and self-aware and maybe some people will like this and will appreciate the part that I'm so mad about but I don't even know how to rate this the first half of this book clearly a five star the second half of this book what a one star I'm trying to see it objectively and objectively I can see the like it's a fine book but I'm too close to the source material to be objective so I'm about to give this bitch two stars. I'm mad and I'm going to sleep. Well, you're up all night and your head's down low. Okay, I'm taking pictures of bookmarks today. And this one fits perfectly with the theme of my night stuff. I just thought I'd let you know. These are my favorite bookmarks with the little moons. And look at this one. That's pretty. Oh, there's another star set anything else related to the night i don't think so this one's humongo hello good morning it is day seven the last day of the readathon and i listened to the first chapter of oh gosh i don't know how it's gonna turn out it's a filming day and i don't know if it's gonna go as planned um, Beast Made of Night by Toshi Onibuchi, uh, first chapter, first couple chapters of this, and then I listened to the first couple chapters of Five Midnights by Anne de Villa Cardinal, and they both have to do with, like, monsters and mythology in some way. Um, Five Midnights definitely pulled me in quicker. Beast Made of Night, I don't know, just, like, the writing style didn't grab me I guess in the same way I think I'm gonna continue with five midnights I'm definitely just going to listen to an audiobook today while I get other stuff done so I guess five midnights is gonna follow five different characters right now I've only been following like one at the beginning of the book and it takes place in Puerto Rico and there are some murders that have taken place and I guess um it takes them out of like the real world to solve them and into the world of like myths and monsters. The synopsis says five friends cursed five deadly fates five nights of retribution. So it sounds kind of fun and the audiobook is like nine hours. I don't know how long the actual book is but so like under 300 pages. I don't have the book which is sad because it would have looked really good in my feed. <laughs> I'm doing like a burgundy and green theme right now i don't even think my library has it it came out last year so if i love it maybe i'll just order it from my local indie bookstore so no reading update but that's my hair update oh my god i'm so tired i have gotten myself halfway through five midnights and what's it called sorry you're so close to my face night sky with exit wounds this is really fast to get through because it's poetry, which is why I meant to read it first and then forgot a little bit. But I'm really liking them. Oh, I dropped it. And I'm really liking Five Midnights. I checked out the audiobook. I've been listening to it while doing a bunch of other things. I filmed so much today. I edited. I took bookstagram pictures. I basically had the type of Sunday that I always have been meaning to have the last couple weeks. Where on Saturdays I get to like... Just hang out with my family, not do too much on the internet, and just kind of chill. And then Sunday is like productive as hell. Cleaning the house, getting everything prepared for the next week, 
filming and editing, doing bookmarks and just getting all this stuff done. And then also trying to get a good night's sleep, which works but like reading doesn't really fit into Sundays now but I did get like three quarters of the way through five midnights I only have like two hours to go so I'm gonna listen to a bit as I fall asleep right now it's almost 10 and my goal is to be asleep by 10 because that just sets me up for success for the week and then I could probably listen to another hour in half an hour on my commute to work so I am extending the buzzword-a-thon for myself into Monday which I think is okay because I'm already halfway through some things I have no real other reading plans for the last couple days of the month so I don't feel bad about it and I already uploaded a video today which means I don't feel pressure to post my vlog like super soon not that you care just the behind the scenes of my channel which I always feel like sharing Anyway, Five Midnights is super interesting so far. We're basically following a girl named Lupe. She's our main character. I thought we would have five characters and five perspectives, but I'm coming to understand what's actually happening. And Lupe has a new friend in Puerto Rico, and they are working together to find out what happened um, with these murders. A lot of people are hiding a lot of things. There's a lot of secrets, and there's definitely some otherworldly things happening. Lupe's uncle is like the chief of police and so doesn't want to let her into it. Um, there's a lot of like violence and gangs and dangerous areas that he doesn't want her getting involved with. But growing up with the chief of police as your uncle like just makes you naturally interested I guess in uh, these crimes and since when they were living apart he would like let her know the type of stuff he was working on but now that she's living with him, he like doesn't want her involved, but she's used to being involved in his stuff. So they're definitely discovering some interesting things and I'm excited to continue reading. So I'll wrap it all up tomorrow and come back and let you know what happened. I'm wishing you were here tonight is like holding on. Okay, I'm home from work, back in Liam's room. I asked Robbie to pick me up some fall flowers for some Instagram pictures. And this is like the prettiest bouquet in exactly what I was picturing ever. So I need to take some pictures. I also kind of feel cute today. So maybe I'll put myself in some Instagram pictures. Who knows? I finished Five Midnights and I think I'm giving it four stars. I feel like I'm a little bit hesitant because I've been checking out some reviews for it. And I know that there's some people specifically from Puerto Rico who feel like the book um, stereotypes or gives kind of an uh, unsavory description of the area and don't appreciate how it's being represented. As somebody who went into the book like not um, taking like the descriptions as an educational tool to like learn more about it, I don't think that like impacted my perspective or give me any assumptions about the island especially because it's like fantastical um but i respect where everyone's coming from as far as just my enjoyment which i guess is the point of a review i would give it four stars for like a specific audience this is the kind of book that i need to look at from the lens of young ya the writing itself i don't know if this is a debut book i don't know anything about this book um or this author but it felt pretty like young as in like young in the author's career and looking at it with a certain lens i think for what it did it was good i thought the characters were all interesting they were really frustrating to read from the main character isn't necessarily the most like likable girl she's pretty like intense and selfish and strong in some ways strongly opinionated i liked that it shed some light on like drug addiction and I like the world that we were kind of set in and how much focus got put in certain areas. For somebody who doesn't love urban fantasy traditionally, like, or I just don't pick it up a ton, which is kind of what I would consider this book. I liked how much it's spent on real world stuff and mysterious stuff and then on the actual like monster creature magic type of thing. I just put out this video which is um, weird book recommendations and this would kind of fit into that. I also finished Night Sky with Eggs and Wounds by Ocean Vuong. 
which is a very different mood. Um, this was intense in a very different way. I think the best part about reading poetry for me is being able to find um, discussions from the author like on YouTube or readings because getting to listen to Ocean Vuong um, say some of these, perform some of these made me connect with it even more and made it more impactful because sometimes poetry just like goes over my head. There were definitely some that I felt really strong for me and then some that I didn't really get what it was trying to say. I'm, oh, here it is. Someday I'll Love Ocean Vuong is uh, incredible and getting to hear like where this inspiration came from, which was like another poet, and finding the reading of this in a video just made it even better. What do you want to know when I read a book of poetry? Like, what do you want me to tell you about it to make you pick it up or stray away from it? Like, do you want to know the type of poetry? Do you want to know the themes? Do you want to know, like, his perspective? I feel like the themes are just, like, family and, um, suffering like a lot of poetry collections i feel like it had it was perfectly organized which is just like such a stupid thing that probably nobody cares about but i always love when poetry collections start in a certain mood and a lot of them do the same thing where it starts with like intensity intensity and hardship and slowly transforms into like a feeling of hopefulness which is kind of how you always want to end a poetry collection like for me this type of poetry in general always works for me because it seems like so random like he's talking about um overdosing and blood and bombs and then it just goes discovery my longest pubic hair is 1.2 inches this one especially is fun notebook fragments not fun but like it's fun to read something that is all over the place. My other favorite is to my father, to my future son. I loved this. I don't know if I got that across. Um, five stars. So to wrap up, I don't think I tried to take a thumbnail at any point in this video. So I'll probably just do that right here with all of these books. And hopefully you'll understand that it's a vlog. I don't really know how to do thumbnails. I'm all over the place lately. Um, so to recap, I read five books this week, which is cool. I'm really bummed I didn't get to Beasts Made of Night. I tried twice and it just wasn't meshing with me, but I'm going to see if it has an audiobook. The Night Swim by Megan Golden, four stars. I wish it had done a little bit more and it could have been a favorite thriller of the year. Although technically I guess it is in my favorite thrillers of the year because I have have I given any thrillers five stars this year? Maybe like one or two. Then the other thriller I read was Goodnight Beautiful by Amy Molloy, which I'm still upset about. And I'm giving, I don't know how harsh this is, but I feel like I'm giving it two stars because that's how disappointed I am with how strong it started. And you'd think like I can appreciate how strong it started and have that factor in, but no, because it just set me up for disappointment. Um, the Night Tiger by Young Chi Chu, five stars. I don't say this very often, but this is the kind of book that I could see myself rereading multiple times in my life. Uh, and then Night Sky with Exit Wounds, five stars. And then Five Midnights, four stars. That's what happened. I hope you ended this with a recommendation, maybe? Or you can just share your thoughts down below if you've read anything that I've read or you're going to pick up anything now. I hate to be like the one to convince you not to read something. So like if I rate something really low, don't take that as me saying you're not going to like it or no one will like it. I'm just picky. Thank you for participating in Buzzwordathon. If you did, let me know what you read down below. Link me to your vlog or your Instagram if you post along the way. I feel like this is the least... Um, involved i've been with a readathon in a while which makes sense why well, i'm changing the readathon and it's going to be a lot more like publicly run okay i will see you when will i see you probably in a couple days with my wrap up yeah okay bye